Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda. Channel name is Alba Stitcher. Um, this is flush tube number 14. Today is Sunday the 16th of May. I hope you're all well. Um, if you're new here, then I hope you enjoy what you see um, and, you, and you return again. Um, and if you're a returning uh, viewer, thank you very much for coming back. I'm putting up with my ramblings about cross stitch. Uh, this is a channel about cross stitch. I don't do any other crafts. Um, I show the projects I've been working on, anything that I may have finished and any haul that I've purchased in the last few weeks. Um, so hello, how's everyone doing? Um, I'm doing okay. Um, life is life, so it's been quite busy, um, but I'm getting there. I have to maybe apologise before I even start and that's not always a good position to be in but um, my stitching has been a little bit all over the place. Um, I did start Stitch Mania and I will show you what I've done but I haven't really... I haven't really enjoyed Stitch Mania. It's not what I thought it was going to be. As I, as you know, if you've watched before, I've never done Stitch Mania. This was my first time and it, it kind of goes against how my thinking is um, and how my brain works. So there, there is there is the starts, but there's not a lot of progress, to be honest. Um, what I've got today for you is a mixture of different projects that I've worked upon. Um, I also have one finish, which is um, a little bit surprising. Um, and I have some haul. Um, yeah, I've got some shout outs as well for the under 1000 uh, subscriber club. Um, I actually have some questions also to answer. Um, and I also have a giveaway, which will be the first giveaway on my channel. So hang around for that later on. Um, so let me start with questions. Um, um, there was a, was a few questions. Um, the first one was about my Lowry stand. You'll see it here. Um, maybe you can't see here. There's my Lowry stand. You know, this was a, a recent purchase in the last couple of months. Don't know exactly when I, I bought it now. Um, but it has been a little bit of a game changer for me. Um, I normally stitch with Q-snaps and the Lowry stand has really let me step up to do two-handed stitching, which when I'm here and the Lowry stand, I work with the Lowry stand, then that's what I do. Um, often though, I don't stitch here, I stitch elsewhere in the house um, or outside in the garden and then it's just I, I hold my, my hoop then. Um, somebody had recommended getting a corner clamp. So far I've not managed to track one down. I didn't quite understand what would be the purpose of it, but I think I now know because when you fit your Lowry stand, sorry, when you fit your Q stab into the Lowry stand, I find if I have it as an 8 by 11 um, and I do have it on that horizontal lengthwise, that it can sometimes kind of move. Um, so I'm wondering if I have the corner clamp that it holds it firmer. That's what I'm thinking. But uh, in terms of me, it's been a bit of a game changer. So if anyone uses hoops or Q-snaps um, and is in kind of two minds of whether they would want to make the investment into a Lowry stand, I would certainly say it's worth it. I haven't tried it with my Almanac frame yet. I also have an Almanac frame. And I also have a very large Q-snap, which is 17 by 17, that I hardly use because it is so kind of cumbersome and, and wide. But now I think with a Lowry stand, it will be much easier. Um, I also had a question about how I kit up projects. Um, yeah, I, I the, normally the first thing I, I start with is I have the chart. I have a chart that I want to... Um, stitch. It doesn't mean that I don't have uh, lots of stash that's not allocated to a project because I do. I buy fabric basically on a whim. If I see something that I think could be useful at some point in the future, then I'll certainly, excuse me, then I'll certainly um, purchase it. Um, and as a result, I have quite a large um, selection of fabric. So if I have the chart and I've bought some new charts um, these last couple of weeks. If I have a chart, I normally start, I've got the chart and I've bought the threads 
and then I go hunting for the fabric to see what I would um, want to stitch on. Um, occasionally I have I have the chart, I have the threads and I have the fabric that I like but it's either the, not the right size or maybe the count's not really how I want to, to stitch it. Maybe I want it smaller and I have only maybe a 28 count. So that can sometimes happen. Um, but normally for me, I have the chart and then I go hunting. I wouldn't have a piece of fabric thinking, oh, I need to find a, a chart to stitch on this fabric. I would rather leave that to the universe that everything will come together when it's time. Um, in terms of DMC and over dyes, I'll be brutally honest, most times I go searching for the over dyes. However, I've had disappointing results. First of all, with over dyes, not really having any variegation at all. So being very one colour, solid one colour. And then I feel in that point, I wish I had just bought the DMC. And the other thing that can happen is that you buy the over dyed and it's for like a small, small amount of stitches. Um, and therefore the variegation would never be shown anyway. So I kind of have that battle in my head almost when I, I go to kit up what I really want to get from the cat from from the fabric and the threads and maybe what sort of effect. And often if I see things stitched on Instagram, I might ask the person, what did you use? Because that would give me a greater understanding whether the over dyes um, is worth purchasing or not. Um, and I had one final question, which was about my R&R &R fabric. I have a, a few pieces of R&R &R fabric. To be fair, I purchased them all when I was living in the Netherlands and I got all of them. I am sure I am sure I got all of them from an Italian website called Casa Senina. Um, I'm sure that's where I got all my R&R &R fabrics. Um, they are easily accessible if you're in Europe easily accessible. However, what I have noticed since coming to the UK is that the prices for uh, delivery for the UK is quite, I think, quite a lot. Um, it is equivalent to what I would pay normally for shipping from the US. So I, I think it's quite high. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend them for UK based stitchers unless they only they were the only pay people that had what you wanted. So yeah, that was all my questions. So that was nice actually having some uh, questions from people. So yeah, thanks. And if there's anything people want to ask me, um, it's great. Also, I want to thank everyone for the lots of advice I got about hoop finishes. In my last video, I had suggested or I had said that I had seen someone had a wall in their, I don't actually think it was their craft room, but they had lots of uh, hoop finishes up in the wall, which I quite liked. Um, and in my kind of office space in my house, I think I want to do some hoop finishes. So I got lots of suggestions and I've kind of worked my way through many of them. Um, and I, I am not a natural finisher, which you kind of know. Um, and I watch things lots of times until I think, right, OK, now I've got it. Now I can do it. I envy or I am in awe of those of you who can see something very quickly on an Insta story and be like, oh, yeah, I can do that. I am not like that at all. Um, in fact, so much so that when I first went looking for a video on the pin stitch, which I wanted, I was determined I was going to master the pin stitch. Yeah, I must have watched about. I don't know, 10 videos. And then there was one of them that I thought, yeah, that kind of clicks with me. And then I went back to it quite a few times. So that's the way I am. I need to kind of watch and watch and watch. And then, yeah, OK, now I know what I've got to do. Um, that's just the way I am and I have no problem with that. So, yeah. OK, let's talk about what I've been stitching on this week. And let's first of all start with Mania. If you've um, been watching, you'll know that I was doing Mania. It was a kind of Blackbird design Christmas Mania and I appreciate everyone who's been doing it along with me. Um, and my plan was to start the four Blackbird design Christmas samplers. I was going to do one each weekend. Um, initially, I had thought I would stitch on it all week. Uh, that's not happened. I have made a start. All my starts are very small, 
um, and today I will start for the third weekend and then next week I'll start the fourth one and then that will be me. All my starts will be very small and it's not because I don't like the charts, it's not like I don't like the fabric or the threads or anything, it's just I'm really enjoying my other projects that I have at the moment. Um, I never thought that would be the case. I was convinced that I would be fine and would just run with my Blackbird design and have no problem but it's not really been like that. So let's talk about excuse me while I find my board let's talk about week one so for week one um I'll just take that off for week one it was going to be this chart here well it wasn't going to be it was sorry which is Merry Christmas by Blackbird Design and I had chosen to stitch this on R&R &R fabric using all the called for threads so here is my and please I'll repeat it it's a start it's nothing more than a start um here is my very small <laughs> my very small start yeah and I need to say <laughs> I had a terrible time with the border if you, I don't know if you can see if you look really closely this border has been unpicked I don't know about three times um I think to a certain extent I could have done with maybe better lighting or maybe my eyes were really tired. I don't have great eyes anyway, but maybe my eyes were really tired. But it's basically three shades of green in the border. And I was just, yeah, it was not good. Now my fabric, because I kept the tag on it, is R&R. &R. Okay. And it's French roast. And it's a lovely fabric. Um, and that's the width of my sampler. That's the full first line, if I show you here. I do have, obviously, the side border to add in, but that's really the width of it. So it's a very small sampler, and if I had just... I don't know what was wrong with me, but if I had just buckled down, I could have got a lot more done. But I think part of the problem was also the unpicking and the, oh, this wasn't right... Yeah, so it didn't go so well for me, um, but I have no issues with returning to it, which is good. It's not as if I had to put it in time out. It's in the beautiful bag by Stephanie, um, which is lovely. So that was week one of uh, Mania. And then I had my second weekend and it was Felice Navada. Again, a beautiful chart. I chose to do it with the called for over dyed threads and here is my progress i need to take this one off the q snap so that i can start week three let me <laughs> again oh, i don't have a lot of progress there i didn't have a lot of frogging on this one i don't know i just as i say i just really struggle with the whole concept um of starting something every week when I feel as if I have something unresolved that I wanted to stitch on. Um, but again, this is a fabulous fabric. This is Beach Brew by R&R. &R. Um, and yeah, this one's a little bit bigger, so I don't, I think I still, I will have to move the Q-snap. There is still quite a bit here to stitch um, before you get the full width of it. Again, this was a very small start. It's not like me. But it is what it is, um, and I will pick them up again. That's not that's not the factor. Um, I absolutely love the charts. I love the fabric. The threads and the palette are great, but it, it's just me. Just me. So, what also? I also stitched on my Avlia um, Byzantine Star. I don't know if you remember this one here. Um, and someone very graciously gave me some more information about the designer. It's all very interesting. Um, she also has a floss tube. I will link it below if you want to go and check out um, some of her own work that she does. And someone also um, gave me some information about the cloth that she used. It's a, a 26 count ground cloth and I may well try and track some of that down. But I made a little bit of progress on this one. Um, I've done whole ones one side of the star to be fair 
um, look, I just kind of move my threads away. You don't really need to see. Let's see if that's a bit clearer. So I've done all of one. I'm just kind of blowing it out. It's not it's not as white white as that. It's not as stark. Um, so I just need to carry on with the border and then do the second one and that will be it finished. It'll be very small. Um, I think it's charted for I don't I don't think it's the ground cloth, but it is charted for um quite a large count and I I've done it on 32 count um I think it's uh, Belfast, Spygart Belfast. So yeah, I, I really like doing that. Now there is some back stitch, stitching to do around these kind of lighter pink. Um, I don't know what you would call them, filigree maybe. Um, but I actually love this. I'm not quite sure how it should be finished. Um, once it's completed, that might give me an idea whether it should be a pillow finish or, I mean, in the, the, the chart it shows it as a almost like a a tray cloth but I wouldn't really be happy at doing it like that for me anyone who knows me knows that yeah I can make a bit of a mess so yeah that's probably not the best thing for me so I worked on that and I, I really enjoyed working on that one as well um, and then finally oh no not finally <laughs> I also worked on in the last two weeks is this sampler and this is Mary Catherine Harris it's the zebra sampler there is a stitch along going on for this one it's called the zebra sampler sal um, it's it's really good and I am actually at the point of all the kind of alphabet and numbers so I've got all the exciting stuff to do next um, and here I'll show you it's stitched in DMC and that's my finishing point so far. Wait, let's just move that, make it clearer for you. Um, I will now move the Q-snap um, so that I can work on the second part. But I'm really loving it. This is on 32 count red pair by Weeks fabric. And I'm using the Cold for DMC, which is, I have it lying here on my ring, is um, 3866 which is the white which I've not used yet and the dark colour is 3799 so yeah that's my progress on that one someone else has chosen to do on a very kind of vibrant gold colour so that will be interesting to see but I've, I've enjoyed working on this um, week's dye work uh, red pair what I would say it's old weeks. I don't see any um, orange line. Um, so the weave is very loose. And I'm saying it's 32 count, but I think it might be 30 count. Um, the, the weave is very loose of it, but it, it's fine for me. But I know some people may not like that. So, yeah, I've actually got another piece of this fabric, um, although I am sure I have enough because I have it all kind of rolled up in my Q-snap here um, because I want to do the Lizzie Kate selfie sampler. I don't know if anyone's seen that, but I'm thinking I want to do that as well. So yeah, I also worked on Mary Catherine Harris. Um, and that was all the projects that I worked on that are still kind of in progress. But I also worked upon my May stocking for my blackbird design and this is the may may stocking and here it is here now it is very pale and delicate the colors is uh paloma pepper and sugared violets i think are the threads the fabric is a 30 count permanent um natural um yeah it's, it's very pale and delicate. It's a little bit washed out. It's probably a little bit darker than what you're seeing. But this was a lovely... Yeah, that's probably where we're at. It, this is a, a lovely stitch. I really enjoyed working on this one. Um, did Yeah, as I say, my stitching in the last couple of weeks, I don't know, has been all over the place. Um, there's only been, I think, two days where I didn't stitch. And that was due to, I got my second COVID vaccine and yeah, I, I didn't agree with me at all. Um, when my parents, first of all, when I got my first one in February, I had no problems. 
Um, and then I got my second one and it really did kind of knock me. So my stitching has possibly not been as prolific as it normally is, but I really enjoyed stitching on this one. And I've already planned my June. I have managed to get the threads. I have a big stack of the 30 count uh, linen. I bought that at the beginning of the year so that I would have enough to do me, if not through the 12 full 12 months to get me through most of the months. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to um, doing my, my June stocking next. So let me put this here. What does it mean for Mania then? So I'm now on week three of Mania. Um, and the third chart that I'm going to start, and I will start it today, is this one here, which is Bringing Good Cheer by Blackbird Design. Um, what I love um, is really the, the red border. I love the red border on this and the big bowl of fruit. And I have all the called for um, threads and the linen I'm using is let me see actually I I got two no no it's a big piece I have quite a large piece here so I'll not need all of this but this is Dusty Road by Seraphim Fabrics so yeah that's the linen I'm going to be using with the threads and that will be my start um, later on today. Yeah. And then that just leaves the final one, which is Christmas um, Rose, which I'll do. I'll, I'll start next weekend. So, yeah, that was all my projects and a little bit of um, plans for the next um, coming week. And I don't mean to be rude, but I want to try and put this away because after you film, I said... So it's really such a mess. You think you're all so organised and it's always such a mess to clear up after you've filmed. Okay. Um, I'd like to do some shout outs for um, some stitchers that I watched who would be under the 1000 subscribers. Um, the first one that I came across was someone who had given me some information about a hoop finish that she did herself. Um, and that's Forest City Stitching. Um, she's quite prolific crafter. She she attends um, craft fairs as well. Um, she has a, a little bit of everything in her videos, so I would certainly go over and, and check her out. The other one I would like to shout out is three people who, who stitch together called the Three Trails Stitching. Um, and what, what I loved about it is, first of all, it's quite good when you have more than one person because you have kind of three different perspectives um, of what people are stitching or, or their opinion on different things, which is nice. But they also do a kind of media section at the end where they talked about true crime and um, things they had been watching and listening to um, and reading. So that was quite interesting. And the final one I would like to give a, a shout out to is Wide Eyed Stitcher. Um, she does uh, mostly cross stitch, but she does do other crafts as well. Um, so what I'll do is I'll link each of them down below in the description box so you can go over and um, have a little look, see if there's something there that you would like. Okay, now I would like to talk about my favourite part, my stash positions, what I've managed to um, purchase in the last couple of weeks. Um, before we go any further, I would like to call out Melly Ellie Stitchers, eh, Stitches. Um, she is at the root of much of my purchasing in the last two weeks. Um, I watched her latest video and she showed both of these uh, charts and I uh, just paused it and I went and purchased them. I got them from 123Stitch. Um, I also ordered the threads, so I need to now hunt my stash for the uh, fabric. So this is the first one. You'll have seen these, that both these um, charts are by Teresa Colgate. This one is called Prey. Um, Melanie is stitching this for her grandmother, I think. Um, she's almost finished. Uh, I mean, I know it's a stitched heavy piece. Um, I I don't do full coverage. I have much admiration for people who do heads. Um, it's such a commitment um, to those large pieces. But when I saw this, I just, yeah, I just, I fell in love with it. And certainly you should go and check out her 
uh, latest video. I will link it below. But I rushed off and bought that and the threads. And then she'd also shown this bunny. Someone else had shown the bunny before and I had seen it. Um, but when I just saw it on the video, I thought, oh, I need to have that as well. I kind of like a bunny. So, yeah, those two are both Melanie's fault. But, yeah, great, great purchases. I also managed to purchase some Blackbird Design fabric. Um, here it is here. I got it off a Stash Unload site. No, I didn't. I got it off um Facebook group. The Fans of Blackbird Design Facebook group. If you like Blackbird Design, then you should certainly be part of the group. Not only is it wonderful to see um everyone's progress on Blackbird's charts. Uh, yeah, it's a haven for enabling everyone. Uh, yeah. So I managed, somebody was selling. She had... She did have more than this. Um, she probably had about four or five pieces, um, but I just took, I, ju I just took what what I thought would be useful to me. Um, so I have these two lovely pieces of Blackbird Design fabric, um, and I know you're sitting there saying, "Well, you're not a finisher. What are you going to do?" I I will be doing some finishing. I have finished pillows before so this has spurred me on a little bit to do some more finishing um i plan to take some i'll just leave them there so people can look at them a bit longer i plan to take some time off at the end of may beginning of june and i will do some finishing in that time i'll dig out the sewing machine i have it here and i'll do just a couple of of pillow finishes and maybe this fabric is what i will use I also um, managed to purchase some fabric um, from the Northumberland uh, Sampler House. Um, she's done a few fabric sales. Um, the first time round, I didn't manage to get anything. I will take them out the plastic so that you can see them. I apologise if this is really noisy. Well, that's not really... Um, but anyway, so she had a second sale, um, I think the following week, and I was most fortunate that I managed to, to grab a couple of uh, pieces. So I'll share those with you. Um, fabric looks, looks great. Um, and it's always nice to have a kind of new supplier of fabric. Again, for me, it's neutral because, yeah, I always look for the neutral fabrics. Let's see if you can see these clearly. Okay. So, this is what we have. Okay. No, no. It's maybe about right. Maybe. So, what we have here on this side is 35 count light, light cocoa. And on this side, it's 32 count uh, yellow beige. And you can see that they are quite different, um, but very, very nice. And I'm thinking, although I already have it kitted up with a different fabric, I'm thinking I might use this one for Dreaming of Klimt by Barbara Anna. Um, I have that whole chart kitted up with all the, the threads as well. And I do have a piece of fabric, but I'm thinking this one could well be better. But yeah, these are lovely. Um, I would certainly recommend that you keep an eye on our Etsy shop. I'll link it below um, because she also has some great thread keeps um, and, and great charts as well. So you can maybe see something there that you would like. So that was also, I think, quite a good um, kind of find. Um, and I also, someone on another Stash Unload site was selling some trims um, and while in the UK it is possible to get trims Lady Dot creates I think because of the pandemic everything has been a little bit more difficult to get a hold of so this person was had hand dyed some trims herself and yeah so I tried to get some okay so these colours are not correct at all. This, this colour is nowhere near red. It's much more deeper. Almost, I would say, 
yeah, it's it's not as bright as this. Um, it's very much um much much deeper, darker. Um, almost going to a burgundy or a merlot shade. And then we have two that are kind of caramel shades. And I'll, I'll just remind you that I am going to do some finishing. It will happen um, at the end of uh, May, beginning of June when I'm off from work. So, yeah, I, I thought, you know, to support small businesses, um, people who are, are trying to make things more accessible for us in the UK, it's always worthwhile. Um, I have no issue uh, ordering from the, the US or other parts of Europe. I mean, I've I've normally always got some sort of order in at one, two, three stitch. Um, in fact, I think I'm waiting for some legacy fabric, picture this plus legacy from one, two, three stitch. So it's always good to be able to get things uh, here locally as well. So that was all, I think, my purchases. Um, I do have one. I'm looking for some more advice again. Um, it's not about uh, hoop finishes. This time it's about fabric choices. I'm in a bit of a quandary. I have this chart here. I do quite like. I do quite like a, a Halloween chart. I have quite a few. Um, but I have this chart here, Halloween Town by Madame Chantilly. Um, I have it kitted up with DMC, but I don't really have the right type of fabric. And I have this piece here, but I'm thinking I'm going to over dye it because there's too much white in it. So this is a silk weavers fabric. I don't know if you can read that. So it's a silk weaver fabric, but there is a lot of white in it. You know, it's really, really mottled. And I'm not sure that the chart will look right on this. And I'm wondering if it's an idea that, although you know these bits here might be okay. Because there's quite a lot of darkness. But then when you get here, the chart will certainly not look right. And this is a 28 count. So I'm going to need quite a large part of it, but maybe, maybe I'm answering my question myself, but maybe that. But my, my real question is about over dyeing. Um, what do you think would be best to lose some of the white here? Um, there is just too much white. Um, I actually would prefer if it was more like this top section here. That's really what I want without that white bit there. So yeah, I'm not sure what would be the best colour to over dye it with. So if anyone's got any suggestions or experience of, of over dyeing already hand dyed fabric, that would be great. That would um, give me some sort of help as to what I should do. And that's the chart that I'm thinking of doing it on, which is Halloween Town. I mean, I could just get maybe, I'm sure I've maybe got a piece of Zweigart, um granite maybe which is just a kind of um, solid grey colour that may be the way forward for this piece but yeah so any information about that would be would be great to hear um, and finally I want to do a giveaway um, I've been doing my videos now for I think six months um, I've been quite surprised first of all that people want to watch me and listen to me ramble on about stitching um in some ways this has almost been my therapy to help me get through the last um kind of turbulent five months um someone had said to me in a comment that i was their therapy i would say it's reciprocal at the moment um so i wanted to give something back and i didn't want to wait till i hit a particular number um so I decided that we would have a giveaway and we'll probably have a giveaway in the next few weeks. I'll probably do one. Um, I'm a big fan of Blackbird Design. I, I truly believe in buy, buying all the Blackbird, which I do. So I wanted to give away this Blackbird chart, which is Sewing Bird. And it is part of a, a series. And I have also purchased... Actually, it took me a while to manage to get all the threads, but I've got all the threads for you as well. 
So the person who wins will get not only the chart, but all the threads as well to complete the chart. So that's the giveaway, my very first giveaway on my channel. Um, what I would like to say um, that please don't mention giveaway. Please be over 18 so that I can have your address. Um, I will ship internationally, no matter where you are, it's no problem. Um, I would also like it that you were a subscriber, but yeah, people choose not to subscribe, they don't. But it would be nice if you were a subscriber. And I think the comment that I would like to see is, or the word I would like to see is bird. Um, not only because it's... Um, a sewing bird but also because it's blackbird design so if you leave the comment bird um, I will then enter you into the the draw and I'll do it in the next two weeks so by the time it comes to my next video which I normally film on the Saturday but today it's a, a day later as I said to you I wasn't feeling great after my second Covid uh, vaccination but that doesn't mean people shouldn't be vaccinating themselves they should certainly if they get the opportunity they should certainly be going and um, getting the injection so two weeks today's the 16th yesterday was the 15th so the 29th of May I will close this giveaway um, yeah um, please don't say anything yeah it was I would like a stitcher to get it preferably someone who likes blackbird designs and I think that's all. Plans that I have will be to start not only my third Blackbird Design Christmas sampler, but next week also my fourth. And I want to work a little bit on my Satsuma Street Owls, which have been neglected in the last two weeks. Um, it is possible I have a few new starts in amongst the, the next two weeks as well, but who knows. So I think that's it. I hope you're all well, staying safe. Um, the whole world appears to think that COVID has gone away, but yeah, I don't think it has. Not really. Um, particularly if you watch the news, there is, um, yeah, there's some scary stuff happening out there. So stay safe, be sensible, um, be kind, look after one another, and um, I'll see you in two weeks and uh, enter the giveaway. Okay, bye bye.